Tamano O, String of Beads. The power of the famous classical waka collection Ogura Hyakunin Ishu as an educational tool lies in its immensity. I first encountered the word Tamano O in a poem from the collection by the poet Princess Shikishi of the 12th century. Tamano O yo, tae naba tae ne nagarae ba, shinoburu koto no yowari mozo suru. Like a string of beads, break now, shatter my life. For if I live on, I must surely lose the strength to conceal my secret love. Although at the time I learned that Tamano O, string of beads, means life, inochi, it took me several decades to understand just why it had that deeper significance. In short, Tama denotes the same thing as the word Tamashi, soul or spirit. Tamashi is a soul that lives forever. In classical Japanese, adding a no O to the end of a word meant that whatever the word referred to would continue in perpetuity. The term Tamano O thus denotes a soul or spirit with an internal existence. It is important to stress that Tamashi, a soul, constitutes the kernel of a person's life force or inochi. By adding a no o to tama inochi, the word thereby came to express eternally continuing life. No grade schooler would ever understand this, surely. But when you start to think about it, you can see how truly amazing the word tama no o is. First of all, the core of the life force is the soul, the tamashi. This is a nice identification, a good, a good place to start. The human body is just a karimono, which literally means a temporary vessel and something borrowed. Hence, when the soul leaves the vessel of a person's borrowed body, death descends upon the person. The modern verb hanareru, which means to depart or to, to separate from, was read kareru, the same word for to wither or to wilt in classical Japanese. Hanareru therefore meant the same thing as flowers wilting, kareru, and expiring or losing their life force. What happens then to the eternal soul, the tamashi, when it departs from the body? In antiquity, people believed that the soul would become a bird once it had vacated its mortal flesh. When I explained this belief to a group of elementary students, one of them asked me, so what happens when that bird dies? The bird, I answered, becomes the wind when it dies. In this way, the soul exists for all eternity. The idea that the individual's life force or inochi continues until the last breaths of the wind is worthy of our appreciation. The body or niktai and its life force, inochi, are two distinct entities. When the soul leaves the body, the body becomes a leftover corpse, an empty nothingness, a kumu, as the Buddhists say. The body extinguishes itself in the process of the physical transformation we call death. In contrast, the soul con constitutes none other than life itself. Now turning to birds, now becoming the wind, the process of dwelling anew in a different body is none other than the essence of the life force, or inochi. In book four of the Manyoshu, we find the following waka poem by the female poet Nakatomi no Iratsume. Tada ni aite, mite ba no mi koso, tamaki waru, inochi ni mukau, waga koi yamame. If only I could meet you in the flesh and see you, only then would longing cease its hold on my soul swollen life. This waka boldly expresses the depth of the writer's love for another, a love that transcends temporal and spatial distances, stretching to the very last moments of the life force or inochi.